Hello, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. I'm happy to be joined today by Minister Anand and Minister Carr, as well as Dr. Tam and Dr. New. Chaque année, <coughs> quand on arrive à la longue fin de semaine de mai, on sait qu'il reste environ un mois avant le début officiel de l'été. Après un hiver et un printemps difficile, on a tous très hâte à l'été. Cette année, la longue fin de semaine a été d'autant plus spéciale puisqu'elle a marqué un point tournant dans notre lutte contre la COVID-19. On vient de franchir le cap de plus de la moitié des Canadiens qui ont reçu au moins une dose de vaccin. More than half of Canadians have now received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. And that number is going to keep going up fast because millions more doses are coming. We now rank number three in the G20 on doses administered per capita. It's clear that working together as one big Team Canada is paying off. To all of our healthcare staffs at hospitals, pharmacies, and vaccination centers, thank you for being part of this historic effort. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. We're, we're all so deeply grateful. And to everyone who's now eligible to book a first dose, We're all counting on you. Make sure you get your shot when you can. If we all do our part, if we get vaccinated and continue following public health guidelines, we will have a much better summer and we will get through this crisis once and for all. There are lots of reasons to be hopeful, but that doesn't mean we can let our guard down yet. In a number of places, we're still facing a very serious third wave. Last Friday, I reached out to Premier Pallister about the extremely concerning situation in Manitoba. I also had a call with Mayor Brian Bauman of Winnipeg. I let them both know that the federal government is ready to do whatever it takes to keep Manitobans and all Canadians safe. As soon as a province asks for more assistance, we're there to help. That's why, in anticipation of Manitoba's official request for additional support to manage the situation, we're preparing to deploy health, uh, health human, federal health human resources. We're also looking at deploying medical staff through the Canadian Red Cross and sending support from the Canadian Armed Forces. In just a few moments, Minister Carr will speak more about additional support from Manitoba and what we're already doing in the province. Since the beginning of this crisis, our government has worked closely with all provinces and territories to make sure everyone is safe. And as long as this pandemic lasts, that's exactly what we're going to continue to do. Ce jeudi, on va tenir une autre rencontre de tous les premiers ministres des provinces et des territoires. D'abord, on va parler des mesures qu'on prend pour en finir avec cette troisième vague. En ce moment, ça doit être notre plus grande priorité. On va aussi parler des différents plans de réouverture. Les premiers ministres autour de la table auront l'occasion de partager leur expérience de ce qui fonctionne bien à travers le pays. À ce propos, pendant qu'on rouvre graduellement, c'est important de continuer de faire attention. Le nombre de nouveaux cas doit baisser le plus possible. On est tous heureux de voir les restrictions s'assouplir là où c'est sécuritaire de le faire, mais on doit rester responsable. Tout le monde doit continuer de faire sa part. Il faut continuer de respecter les consignes locales de santé publique. Et évidemment, il faut se faire vacciner quand c'est notre tour. Si on fait tout ça ensemble, on va réussir à avoir un bien meilleur été. On va pouvoir voir nos amis sur des terrasses et éventuellement, on va traverser cette crise pour de bon. Aujourd'hui, je veux aussi prendre un instant pour souligner le premier anniversaire de la mort de George Floyd à Minneapolis, aux États-Unis. On se souvient tous d'avoir vu les horribles images de ce meurtre qui nous ont scandalisés et ont choqué le monde. Mr. Floyd's death was a tragedy, and it was a reminder that there are still too many people living with anti-black racism and injustice, including here in Canada. Last summer, Canadians, and especially young people, marched to demand change. From economic empowerment through the Black Entrepreneurship Program to proposing to remove ineffective mandatory minimums from the criminal code to historic investments in community organizations, our government is working with Black communities across the country to make sure nobody is left behind. We will continue to take real action 
to fight systemic racism and create more opportunities for black Canadians and for everyone. Before I end, I'd like to say a few words about the arrest of the Belarusian journalist, Roman Protashevich, over the weekend. The behavior of the Belarus regime is outrageous, illegal, and completely unacceptable. This was a clear attack on democracy and on the freedom of the press. We condemn it and call for his immediate release. We also condemn this kind of dangerous interference in civil aviation. Canada has existing sanctions in place against Belarus and will be examining further options. We also strongly support action through all available international institutions, including the International Civil Aviation Organization, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and NATO. We stand in solidarity with our partners in defending journalists all around the globe. Merci. Je passe maintenant la parole au ministre Carr. Jim. Jim, you might be on mute. I want to begin by acknowledging that I'm joining you from the traditional Treaty 1 territory of the Anishinaabe people and the homeland of the Métis Nation. The COVID-19 situation here in Manitoba is serious. We are experiencing surges, more variants of concern, and climbing ICU rates. Our healthcare system is reaching its limit. To our essential workers, I want to say thank you. To the exhausted nurses, doctors, and other hospital staff who've been on the front lines of this latest surge, you have the gratitude and respect of our entire province. Teachers, custodians, grocery store workers, public transit operators, you've kept life going for us. You keep stepping up. Thank you. Across our province, we are feeling frustrated. Sometimes we even feel angry. We're exhausted by this virus. We've endured our first, second, and now third wave of lockdowns, of business closures, active case counts, and most tragically, lives lost. If you've lost your job or are anxious that you might lose it, if you've had to close down your business, this new surge in the virus may feel crushing. And in light of the current situation, today, departments and agencies across the federal government have again come together to support the government of Manitoba and the people of our province. In response to the recent request from the government of Manitoba, the government of Canada is preparing to deploy additional federal health resources including medical staff to the Canadian Red Cross and the Canadian Armed Forces. The Armed Forces will support vaccine rollout in 23 Indigenous communities in Manitoba. And we are also providing 50 additional interviewers to do contact tracing across the province. The Government of Canada is also prepared to deploy epidemiologists, lab technicians, and increased testing capacity from the Public Health Agency of Canada and Health Canada to respond to needs identified by Manitobans. <clears throat> Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have responded to all 17 requests for federal assistance for Manitoba. The National Emergency Strategic Stockpile has allocated over 37 million units of personal protective equipment vaccine ancillary supplies, and other medical equipment to Manitoba, including nitrile gloves, disposable gowns, face shields, N95 respirators, and surgical masks. Manitoba has requested additional biomedical equipment, which the NESS expects to be able to supply. I would like to thank municipal leaders, such as Winnipeg Mayor Brian Bowman, for their leadership and to Premier Pallister for his cooperation. We all share a common goal, keeping Manitobans safe and building back better and strong as quickly as possible. For the Manitobans who are watching this update, stay home if you can, get vaccinated, and encourage the people you care about to do the same. 
there is hope. More Manitobans are getting vaccinated every day. Canada is in the top three countries of the G20 delivering daily vaccinations. It's up to us to stay vigilant, follow public health guidelines to drive case numbers down, get vaccinated. As the Prime Minister has said, the federal government will do what it takes for as long as it takes to keep Manitobans and all Canadians safe. Thank you, Dr. Tam, over to you. Thank you, and bonjour à tous et à tous. Nationally, prior to the long weekend, we were seeing strong and steady declines in disease trends, and data after the long weekend will tell us whether these trends continue. The latest seven-day average of 5,000 or fewer new cases reported daily reported daily is 40% lower than the peak of activity in mid-April. The number of people experiencing severe and critical illness is also decreasing as overall infection rates come down. The latest seven-day average for the number of people with COVID-19 being treated in their hospitals each day has dropped by 20% since peak activity to about 3,400 daily. Of these, on average, of about 1,300 were being treated in intensive care units, which has dropped 10% since the peak, and average daily deaths are down 15% to 41 deaths being reported daily. With 4.5 million COVID-19 vaccine doses delivered before the long weekend, and Canadians continuing to roll up their sleeves as vaccination clinics expand across the country, our fastest moving trend is happily that of vaccination coverage. Last Friday, we reached the milestone of 20 million people having received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine to date. This number is increasing fast. To continue to make the progress we need, each of us has a key role to play on the vaccine runway by getting vaccinated as soon as we're able and keeping up with essential precautions, such as masking and spacing, we can sustain our strong and steady progress while more vaccines roll out to help us bring this curve in for a landing. Regardless of your vaccination status, following the advice of your local public health authority, choosing lower risk activities and settings, and keeping up with essential precautions will help protect the progress we've made and set us up for a better summer, while we get our house in order for a safer fall. We've been asked to do a lot to protect each other, and it would be great if we could say that this was the last wave we've ever need to worry about. But until the infection rate is well and truly down, we can't regain the upper hand and get our public health, laboratory, and health capacity back on top and ready for the fall. If we can continue cautiously for the summer, while immunity is building across the country, we'll be able to re-establish proactive capacity for laboratory testing, genomic sequencing, case investigation and contact tracing to interrupt the spread at source. Working together, we can end this pandemic and get back to the connections and activities that enrich our social and economic life and well-being in Canada. Thank you. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. À l'échelle nationale, avant la longue fin de semaine, nous avons pu observer une diminution importante et constante dans les tendances de la maladie. Les données que nous recevrons après la longue fin de semaine nous indiqueront si ces tendances se poursuivront. La dernière moyenne sur sept jours de 5 000 nouveaux cas ont au moins signalé quotidiennement est inférieure de 40 par rapport au point culminant atteint à la mi-avril. Le nombre de personnes souffrant d'une forme grave et critique de la maladie diminue également à mesure que les taux d'infection baissent de façon générale. La dernière moyenne sur sept jours pour le nombre de personnes atteintes de la COVID-19 traitées chaque jour dans nos hôpitaux a diminué de 20 depuis le point culminant pour atteindre environ 3 400 personnes par jour. De ce nombre, environ 1 300 personnes en moyenne ont été traitées dans des unités de soins intensifs, ce qui représente une baisse de 10 depuis le point culminant. Le nombre moyen de décès par jour a diminué de 15 soit 41 décès par jour. Avec 4,5 millions de doses de vaccins contre la COVID-19 livrées avant la longue fin de semaine, 
et les Canadiens qui continuent à retrousser leurs manches alors que les points de vaccination se multiplient dans tout le pays, la tendance qui s'accentue est heureusement celle de la couverture vaccinale. Vendredi dernier, nous avons franchi la cape des 20 millions de personnes ayant reçu au moins une dose de vaccin contre la COVID-19 à ce jour. Ce nombre croît rapidement. Pour continuer à faire les progrès dont nous avons besoin, chacun d'entre nous a un rôle important à jouer dans la course au vaccin. En nous faisant vacciner dès que possible et en appliquant les mesures de protection essentielles comme le port de masque et la distanciation, nous pourrons continuer de réaliser de grands progrès alors que nous procédons à la vaccination massive pour nous aider à aplanir la courbe pour de bon. Quel que soit votre statut vaccinal, en suivant les conseils de votre autorité locale de santé publique, en choisissant des activités et des environnements à moindre risque et en appliquant les mesures de protection essentielles, vous contribuerez à assurer les progrès que nous avons réalisés et à nous préparer à passer une meilleure été tout en changeant nos propres comportements pour un temps plus sûr. On nous, demande, on, nous, on nous a demandé de faire beaucoup pour nous protéger les uns les autres et ce serait formidable si nous pouvions dire que cette vague est la dernière dont nous ayons à nous soucier. Toutefois, tant que le taux d'infection n'aura pas belle et bien baissé, nous ne pourrons pas reprendre le dessus et remettre sur pied nos capacités en matière de santé publique de laboratoires et de santé afin d'être prêts pour l'automne. Si nous pouvons continuer à faire preuve de prudence pendant l'été, alors que nous essayons d'atteindre l'immunité dans tout le pays, nous serons en mesure de rétablir une capacité proactive pour les tests de laboratoire, le séquençage génomique, les enquêtes sur les cas et la recherche des contacts afin d'interrompre la propagation à la source. En travaillant ensemble, nous pouvons enrayer cette pandémie et retrouver aux relations et aux activités qui enrichissent notre vie sociale et économique et notre bien-être au Canada. Merci. Thank you, Dr. New. The Prime Minister will be taking three questions on the phone. One question, one follow-up. Same for reporters in the room. Ministers and doctors will remain available for 15 minutes afterward to answer more questions. Merci, Dr. New. Le Premier ministre va prendre trois questions au téléphone. Une question, une sous-question. Même chose pour les journalistes dans la salle. Les ministres et docteurs demeureront disponibles pour 15 minutes par la suite pour répondre à plus de questions. Opératrice, c'est à vous. Thank you. Merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. La première question, Catherine Lévesque, La Presse canadienne. Your line is open. À vous la parole. Oui, bonjour, M. Trudeau. Euh, J'aimerais revenir sur vos, vos propos de la semaine dernière là, sur la Constitution et le fait que Québec veut la, la modifier parce que ça a suscité beaucoup de critiques, hein, beaucoup de craintes, surtout au sein du Canada anglais. Donc, je voulais vous laisser une chance peut-être de clarifier vos propos. Vous, personnellement, est-ce que vous êtes d'accord parce que le, le Québec forme une nation et que le français est sa seule langue officielle? Ça fait longtemps que ce gouvernement reconnaît qu'il faut protéger nos deux langues officielles à travers le pays, mais qu'il faut prêter une attention particulière à la protection du français, y compris à l'intérieur du Québec. C'est ce que nous allons toujours faire. Euh, en même temps, euh, nous allons, comme se doit, protéger les minorités linguistiques minoritaires à travers le pays, euh, incluant la communauté anglophone au Québec. Euh, nous allons toujours être là, pour, pour défendre ces minorités. Euh, par rapport à la, à la nation québécoise, ça fait longtemps que je reconnais que le Québec forme une nation euh, et que effectivement la, la, le Québec est un, un, une province qui, euh, qui a comme... Qui a, comme <coughs> et ça fait longtemps que je reconnais que le Québec a comme langue officielle euh, le français. On suivi, Catherine oui, sur un tout autre sujet, j'aimerais revenir sur le cas de, de Hassan Diab parce que ça a été confirmé la semaine dernière euh, qu'il va subir un nouveau procès en France. Je me demandais, est-ce que vous allez intervenir ou, ou votre gouvernement va intervenir dans ce dossier? Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez faire pour, euh, pour protéger ce citoyen canadien? Ben, et, et si euh, on reçoit une demande d'extradition de la France, ça va être analysé, analysé de façon rigoureuse euh, et euh, en, en bonne et due forme. 
Um, if we receive an extradition request from Quebec, that'll be, uh, uh, sorry, if we receive a, uh, an extradition request uh, from France, uh, we will, of course, uh, analyze it with the full rigor that uh, Canadians expect uh, us to. Thank you. Operator, next question on the phone. Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question. The next question, Dylan Robertson, Winnipeg Free Press. Your line is open. Have la parole. Good morning, Prime Minister. What do you think the need for federal support in Manitoba's ICU says about the provincial government's planning, preparedness, and response for the third wave of the pandemic, given what we saw in the weeks in other provinces from the, the impact of this wave? Thanks, Dylan. Uh, obviously, we are deeply concerned about the situation uh, facing Manitoba, which is why I reached out to the Premier and the Mayor of Winnipeg on uh, Friday uh, to talk about what more we could do. As uh, I said, we stand by uh, to send more support, whether it's through the Red Cross, whether it's the Canadian Armed Forces, whether it's uh, frontline workers. Uh, my job as uh, a federal uh, leader is uh, to be there to support Canadians in every corner of the country, uh, not to judge uh, how provinces have uh, have managed it. It's simply to be there to put the interests of Canadians first, and that's what we will always do. Uh, Jim, do you want to follow up on that? Yes, Prime Minister, uh, we're squarely focused on the needs of Manitobans and when the request comes from the provincial government, we have been there to respond and to respond quickly, uh, whether it's adding vaccination capacity within First Nations, uh, adding more epidemiologists, more public health officials through the Red Cross and the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, we respond to the changing needs within the province as expressed by the Premier and by public health professionals. Uh, we have been here for the people of Manitoba, and that's the focus of our attention, and that's why we are making these further announcements today. Following up, Dylan. Prime Minister, the, Prime Minister, the Manitoba Premier says North Dakota wants to share vaccines with the province, but it's being blocked by the Biden administration. Do you share that understanding, and is our ambassador to Washington advocating to make this happen? Uh, we have been, since the beginning of this pandemic, working with partners around the world, including the United States, uh, to ensure that we get through this as quickly as possible. The conversations continue, including uh, at the level of uh, our uh, ambassador in, uh, in Washington. We will continue uh, to try and make sure that we're getting Canadians vaccinated as quickly as possible so we can get through this uh, and get life back to normal and, as well, uh, turn even more efforts to helping the world get through this because we don't end this pandemic anywhere until we end it everywhere. Uh, nous avons, depuis les débuts de cette pandémie, travaillé avec nos partenaires à travers le monde, incluant les États-Unis, euh, sur le besoin de vacciner les Canadiens le plus rapidement possible. Nous continuons de travailler avec les États-Unis, y compris par euh, le biais de notre ambassadrice à Washington, qui fait un excellent travail. Euh, nous allons euh, continuer de euh, ne ménager aucun effort pour euh, vacciner les Canadiens le plus rapidement possible, pour qu'on puisse retourner à, à une vie normale, mais aussi qu'on puisse se tourner encore plus vers aider les gens à travers le monde, euh, parce qu'on sait que cette pandémie euh, ne se termine pas nulle part si elle ne termine pas partout. Thank you. Opératrice, dernière question au téléphone. Thank you, merci. La prochaine question, our next question, Hélène Bizetti, les groupes de l'information. Your line is open. À vous la parole. Oui, bonjour Monsieur Trudeau. J'aimerais revenir sur cette question euh, de la Constitution. Vos propos de la semaine dernière ont été un peu critiqués dans le reste du Canada, je veux dire par là, hors Québec. Euh, par exemple, le Globe and Mail, le Toronto Star se sont montrés sceptiques. Plusieurs craignent notamment que la reconnaissance de la nation québécoise devienne une espèce de clause interprétative qui pourrait être utilisée pour... Euh, analyser différemment d'autres portions de la Constitution canadienne. Alors, j'aimerais vous entendre. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez de cette crainte? Est-elle, à vos yeux, justifiée? Je ne partage pas cette interprétation. En suivi, Hélène? Oui, OK. Alors, donc, euh, je ne sais pas si vous voulez en donner un petit peu plus de détails. Vous ne pensez pas qu'il y a un risque. 
Euh, certaines des critiques aussi craignent pour la minorité anglophone du Québec, pensent que euh, vous les abandonnez un petit peu et qu'encore une fois, dans cette logique-là, on pourrait éventuellement interpréter le, le fait que le, le français là, soit la langue du Québec, euh, interpréter ça comme une fa un, un, un laisser passer pour diminuer le droit des anglophones. Encore là, qu'est-ce que vous en pensez? Merci. Comme j'ai toujours dit, Hélène, nous allons toujours être là pour défendre les minorités linguistiques à travers le pays, incluant euh, les anglophones au Québec. Euh, mais nous reconnaissons aussi euh, qu'il faut euh, prendre des mesures pour protéger le français à travers le Canada et au Québec. Et euh, nous travaillons euh, avec nos partenaires, euh, incluant les gouvernements provinciaux, pour ce faire à travers le pays, incluant au Québec. Merci. On va maintenant passer aux premières questions dans la salle. Glenn? Uh, Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, Prime Minister, you've said repeatedly you don't want to have an election campaign during the pandemic. Will you commit now to not going to see the Governor General, whether interim Governor General or, or permanent uh, appointment, uh, unless the House of Commons has voted a, a lack of confidence in you until the point that the World Health Organization declares the pandemic over? As I've said, it has been one of the strengths of this country that uh, political parties, that uh, across different orders of government and indeed uh, within uh, uh, parliament and assemblies, have been able to work together to get unprecedented support out to Canadians. I made a promise from the very beginning that we would have Canadians' backs no matter what it took for as long as it took to get through this pandemic, and that has worked. And, uh, by and large, other parties have supported that. Uh, we have seen, however, uh, that uh, we need to continue to have a well-functioning parliament so that we can continue to get uh, support out to Canadians, and that is very much my focus. Nobody wants an election before the end of this pandemic, uh, and we certainly uh, hope to be able to continue to deliver all the helps that we promised to Canadians uh, without uh, over, uh, over interference uh, by opposition parties. Depuis les débuts de cette pandémie, j'ai fait une promesse que nous allions faire tout ce qui est nécessaire pour appuyer les Canadiens, quelle que soit euh, la, la, la durée de cette pandémie. Euh, on a été chanceux au Canada que les différents partis politiques euh, à travers le pays et aussi euh, au Parlement ont pu travailler ensemble pour livrer pour les Canadiens. Mais cette pandémie n'est pas finie. Nous allons continuer euh, d'avoir besoin de livrer euh, pour aider les Canadiens à passer à travers cette pandémie. Et j'espère que euh, les partis d'opposition vont euh, continuer d'appuyer l'aide nécessaire aux Canadiens. Mais effectivement, personne ne veut une élection avant que cette pandémie euh, ne soit terminée. Nous allons continuer de travailler pour bien euh, mettre euh, les Canadiens et la fin de cette pandémie Uh, comme notre seule priorité. Thank you. Next question, CP. Hello, Mr. Trudeau. Man, with the Canadian Press. What assurances or documents do you have that Moderna is actually going to be delivering on their contract, considering that they're supposed to be the workhorse of our vaccine campaign this summer? Has Moderna been clear uh, about what's causing the delays? Actually, I would, I would argue that Pfizer has actually been uh, the reliable workhorse of our vaccinations. They have uh, continued to deliver, although Moderna, particularly uh, in the early months, being able uh, to deliver uh, so many do uh, doses uh, to uh, the uh, Arctic uh, and to remote indigenous communities made a huge difference in preventing further outbreaks uh, up in the, in the north. Um, We are very fortunate as a country to have had uh, you know, so many different uh, deals with so many different countries, uh, companies to allow uh, for the position we are in right now where more than half of Canadians have had at least one dose of a vaccine. That is what is going to get us through this. But on for, uh, further comments on uh, vaccination schedules, I will turn to Minister Anand. Thank you so much, Prime Minister, and thank you for the question. Let's uh, be clear that, as the Prime Minister said, the benefit of our diversified portfolio is that it allows Canada to pull in millions and millions of doses from multiple suppliers. We have 25 million doses distributed in Canada to date, 21 million doses administered. In terms of your specific question relating to Moderna, The supplier has communicated to us 
that millions of doses are expected to be delivered in June and that the first shipment will come in the first part of June. I spoke with Moderna this morning, actually, and my team has been on the phone with them over the past weeks, including over the past weekend. The point that I have repeatedly stressed to Moderna is the urgent need for a delivery schedule relating to June and July deliveries. But rest assured, we will be receiving millions of doses from Moderna during the month of June. We are awaiting a delivery schedule from Moderna itself. Canada remains very much on track to receive vaccines for eligible Canadians to receive a first shot by the end of June and for all Canadians to be fully vaccinated by the end of September. Thank you. CBC, just a follow on uh, to that. There were some questions last week uh, because there was a a 48 million dose number put out there. Then it was more than 40 million. What's the latest on that? What do we know about how many doses we're getting when? Uh, The latest is that we have uh, now vaccinated over half uh, of uh, eligible adults in Canada. And uh, everyone who can now schedule an appointment uh, should be scheduling an appointment. We need to get everyone vaccinated. We remain absolutely confident that we will have uh, more than enough doses uh, in Canada by the end of June to uh, give a first dose to every Canadian who wants one. And uh, second doses will continue to ramp up uh, through June and into the summer. Uh, The exact numbers on Moderna, as the minister has said, uh, we are waiting for a uh, schedule of delivery. But again, I can uh, assure all Canadians there will be more than enough doses by the end of June for every Canadian who wants it to have gotten their first dose and already starting on uh, on, uh, moving forward on second doses. Uh, Anything further to add, uh, Anita? Sure. Uh, I will just add that that figure of 40 million provided by the Public Health Agency of Canada represents only confirmed deliveries. That is, only confirmed delivery schedules are provided to the provinces and territories, and that information hasn't changed. What that number doesn't take into account is the 1 million doses from AstraZeneca that we are expecting in late June and the millions and millions of doses that we are expecting from Moderna in June as well. And so, as the Prime Minister said, we are very much on track to have vaccines for all eligible Canadians to receive their first shot by the end of June, for all Canadians to be fully vaccinated by the end of September. And as soon as the delivery schedule comes in from Moderna, I will be sure to share it with the Public Health Agency of Canada and, of course, the provinces and territories. Thank you. Tonda McCharles, Toronto Start. Um, Prime Minister, I'd like to hear you elaborate a little bit on some of your earlier answers around the Quebec um, amendment. And you kind of were very abrupt with Hélène when she asked you about how do you interpret this um, idea of Quebec as a nation. And I'm interested in your remarks in French. You did say Quebec forms a nation, but what the House of Commons has recognized is actually Quebecers form a nation within a united Canada. So since you seem to be suggesting it's only about language, so if you could just elaborate a little bit more on your thoughts about, to you, what does this phrase mean, the phrase that Quebec is seeking to put in the Constitution? My responsibility as a Prime Minister is to defend the Constitution and to ensure that all Canadians have their rights upheld. That means uh, protecting both French and English throughout the country, and that means ensuring protection for official language minorities across the country. That is something uh, that I have never wavered from and will never waver from. At the same time, we've uh, all been through the constitutional battles of the past number of decades uh, that have left many scars on many people. Uh, I choose always to look forward, uh, look to how we can continue to protect French across the country and in Quebec, while at the same time uh, ensuring protection for linguistic minorities, including the Anglophone minority uh, in Quebec. Uh, these are the things that matter most to me and uh, will continue to matter tremendously to all Canadians. At the same time, uh, there have been recognitions that uh, Quebec forms a nation. Uh, it is a historical fact, uh, a sociological fact, a uh, fact of uh, daily lives. Um, 
and it is something that, uh, that uh, even Parliament has recognized. Uh, we need to move forward uh, and ensure at the same time as we are protecting French within Quebec, we are also protecting uh, linguistic minorities in Quebec and across the country. Uh, ça a toujours été une priorité pour moi uh, de défendre la Constitution, de défendre uh, le français et l'anglais à travers le pays et de reconnaître, uh, comme on l'a fait récemment plusieurs, à plusieurs reprises, uh, l'importance de protéger uh, le français y compris au Québec. C'est pour ça euh, qu'on est avancé avec euh, des propositions pour la modernisation des langues officielles. Et nous allons toujours, euh, en même temps, protéger les minorités linguistiques, que ce soit des francophones à travers le pays ou des anglophones euh, au Québec. Euh, par rapport à la euh, nation québécoise, ça fait longtemps euh, que je l'ai reconnue, euh, que le Parlement l'a reconnue. L'important pour moi, c'est de regarder vers l'avant et de s'assurer que euh, les gens soient protégés euh, dans, leur, euh, dans leur langue à travers le pays. C'est exactement ce que je vais faire. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Louis Blouin de Radio-Canada. Euh, je vais vous parler du conflit sur le lait, conflit sur le bois d'œuvre aussi avec les Américains. Ça piétine, ça fait du surplace. Euh, N'y voyez-vous pas la preuve qu'avec qu l'arrivée de Joe Biden, ben, son attitude ne sera peut-être pas nécessairement très différente de celle de Donald Trump en matière de commerce? Et là, il y a la menace de doubler les tarifs sur le bois d'œuvre. Est-ce euh, que vous en avez parlé avec lui? Qu'est-ce que vous lui avez dit? Est-ce que vous êtes inquiet? C'est sûr que l'arrivée du président Biden a, a transformé l'engagement euh, positif euh, de, des États-Unis euh, envers le multilatéralisme, envers les changements climatiques. Mais on a toujours reconnu euh, qu'il allait y avoir des défis au niveau du commerce et c'est des conversations qu'on a eues, qu'on va continuer d'avoir. Mais comme on a su démontrer euh, pendant euh, la présidence euh, de M. Trump... Euh, on est là pour défendre les intérêts des Canadiens. On sera toujours là pour défendre la gestion de l'offre et nos producteurs de lait. Nous allons toujours défendre euh, notre industrie de bois d'œuvre euh, et les travailleurs euh, à travers le pays. Euh, ça va être des conversations avec les Américains certains. Il va toujours avoir euh, quelques différents. Mais comme on a su très bien le démontrer, on va toujours être là pour défendre les Canadiens. Uh, I think we have seen uh, with the arrival of the Biden administration, uh, there has been a, a significant change in the United States' engagement towards international rules-based order, towards multilateralism, uh, and towards particularly uh, the fight against climate change and the economic opportunities that go with it, which have all been welcome. Uh, at the same time, there will always be uh, issues upon which Canada and the U.S. Uh, have uh, disagreements. Uh, We will always defend supply management and our dairy producers, amongst others. We will always uh, stand up for our uh, forestry workers and the industry across the country. Uh, we will continue, as we did successfully uh, in, uh, in the previous administration, stand up to defend Canadian interests uh, and values wherever necessary, and that will continue. Last question, Global. Prime Minister Michael Couture with Global National. Uh, B'nai B'rith Canada is reporting that the number of anti-Semitic assaults recorded so far in May of 2021 surpasses the total of all of the year 2020. So I wanted to get your reaction to that sharp <clears throat> rise. There has been a really troubling rise in anti-Semitism, uh, not just recently, although, yes, recently, uh, but over uh, the past years as well. And the rise of intolerance in Canada... Uh, whether it's anti-Semitism or Islamophobia or anti-Asian racism or anti-black racism, uh, needs to uh, stop. Uh, we need to be there to pull together, to understand that uh, people can have disagreements, uh, but intolerance and uh, hatred has no place in Canada. As a government, we have taken significant strides on investments, uh, on uh, support uh, for community programs, uh, 
in terms of anti-Semitism, we appointed Erwin Kotler uh, to be uh, our uh, international representative, uh, representative on Holocaust remembrance and anti-Semitism. We've adopted the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Holocaust remembrance definition of anti-Semitism. We have demonstrated uh, strong leadership on that, both at home and internationally. We will continue to, uh, as we continue to move forward, uh, to uh, push back hard against intolerance and hatred of any type, anywhere in Canada. There is no place for that in our country. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Premier ministre. C'est tout le temps que vous avez avec nous aujourd'hui. <rire> On va maintenant prendre les prochaines questions au téléphone pour les